Good morning to all of you. <clears throat> nice to see you all here. I'm, I'm Father Ackley, A-C-R-I. I was here way back in 1965 till 69, so if any old timers here, you might remember me being here. I was here for the first four years of my ministry as a priest, so this was my first assignment, St. Mary's. So I'm very happy to be with you and to pray with you. Also, as you know, tomorrow is the Feast of St. Patrick. Uh, St. Mary's was always known as the Irish Parish. And of course, St. Joseph up on the hill was known as the German Parish. And then St. Anthony's was known as the Italian Parish. They were like the three original parishes of Lancaster. So, um, so anyhow, it's a special day. Uh, in St. Mary's in honor of St. Patrick. In fact, I saw on television last night something had a big gathering in downtown Lancaster celebrating a St. Patrick Festival. Had the streets closed and they had dancing and all kind of good food. So that was a nice celebration. <clears throat> and then of course we're having in Harrisburg, we had a big parade. And then with the bishop now being installed this coming um, Wednesday on the Feast of St. Joseph, so all kind of good things happening. I remember um, a kindergarten teacher said to the class on the first day of school, if anybody has to go to the bathroom, please raise your hand with two fingers. And the little boy sitting in the back of the room and said, what good will that do? <laughs> I remember uh, quite a few years ago, I was reading an article by some archeologists and, uh, and they had unearthed certain artifacts and relics of the oldest civilization in North American continent. They said about 10,000 years ago, a small band of people worked away from Asia across the Bering Strait and through Alaska and began to move south. And you can imagine the journey of these people walking and trudging year after year, moving further south through North America. And, um, they finally made their way through Mexico, Central America, all the way down through uh, South America and into Chile. It took thousands and thousands of years for these immigrants and these people to make their way, you know, in this America country. And you have to, you have to really admire their raw courage, their endurance, their hope, their drive, just to think. Generation after generation kept moving slowly you know, in this continent and making their way south all the way to Chile. In our first reading today, we read about another journey of the courage of Abraham. Now, Abraham was a chief, uh, he was like a, a leader of a small band of people, and he lived in a desert with his family, he had some workers, he had some sheep and cattle, and they lived in this territory. And then we get the beginning of what we call divine revelation. God spoke to Abraham in some way communicated. And, th and th what makes it so important is this is the first time in the history of the human race that God now was directly communicating with us. And the first person God communicates with is Abraham. So he becomes, you know, the father of the Jewish people and he becomes our father in faith. So it's a momentous moment when God stepped into history and he gave, gave directions to Abraham to go to the promised land, which is now Israel. And so Abraham did that. As we gather here then on this particular feast of the uh, Transfiguration, we're also talking about a journey. 
You know, Jesus was transfigured in the mountain as we heard in the gospel. And then he came down from the mountain and he told his apostles to go with him. And then Jesus and his apostles began a journey. The journey that would lead them all the way into Jerusalem. And of course, going into Jerusalem at this time would mean, of course, the end of Jesus' life and his death and crucifixion. So we have these journeys today. Journey, I gave you an example, the pilgrims of North America, Abraham and Jesus going now up to Jerusalem. And so you see, that's really what Lent is all about for us. We are all on a journey and we walk for 40 days and 40 nights and we follow this Jesus and we walk with him and we try to follow him through prayer and penance and sacrifice. I know most of you cannot go to daily mass, but if you went to mass, every day the scriptures are read, of course, and in those scriptures we get directions from Jesus what it means to follow him as he leads the Mount of the Transfiguration and he walks into Jerusalem. And he tells us what we are to do as we walk on this journey of Lent, following Christ for 40 days into Jerusalem. So uh, we're on a journey now. We're only in the second week of this journey that will lead us up to the, and then one day on Good Friday, We'll all stand at the foot of the cross. That's where it leads. It leads all of us to stand at the foot of the cross with Christ these 40 days and this journey. But also then, as you heard from the, the scriptures, of course, the transfiguration, and that was to give us a little insight and anticipation how this all would work out how this all would play out. And when it would, the finality of all that, of course, would be then the end of the journey would be the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ on Easter. So that's how the journey finally ends. And so today, as he takes his apostles from the mount, he just gives them like a sneak preview of what's going to happen to him, how he will suffer and die, but that is only the beginning of the awesome journey of the resurrected life of Christ, and then that will permeate the church through the Holy Spirit of God. So, I hope, you know, during these 40 days now, as you walk with Jesus Christ each day, in prayer and penance and sacrifice, as you're going with him up the road, and you will finally come to Jerusalem with him and his apostles, and you appreciate these 40 days because they are powerful days for us. Very strong days in the church when the church prays for her people and asks the people to pray for the church. So let's keep that in mind. Remember, the 40 days you are walking with Christ and slowly making your way up to Jerusalem. And then one day you'll be there at the foot of the cross on Good Friday but then you will be lifted in exaltation glory by the Holy Spirit of God of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So this is an important time. We're only in the second week of Lent, so we have you know, another 20 some days to go. So I, I hope you at least spend some time in prayer as you walk with Jesus Christ and his apostles making your way up to Jerusalem to the foot of the cross. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen.